and gentlemen, welcome to the Crack Podcast. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome back to the Crack Podcast. You're on with your host, Mookie Fabricio Wilson, as well as my two co-hosts. Give a big round of applause, please, for Mr. Demarcus Beasley. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get a big round of applause, please, for the Gooch, Mr. Professor, Mr. Grumpy, Mr. Know-It-All. Applause, <laughs> <laughs> please, for Agucci Añejo. Man, that's a better, better intro. <laughs> Fellas, how you feeling today? I'm so happy to be joined by you gentlemen. Um, we have 19 days to, to Election Day. Is that correct, Gooch? I mean, some people are already uh, done early early exactly. voting, so it, it's, it's been going on for weeks, to be honest. Election Day has been going on for weeks, but... The actual counting, yeah, we we're, we're coming close. Y'all voted? Y'all voted yet? Haven't had a chance to. We we yeah. they haven't opened it up in Maryland. Yeah, they haven't um, yet. in New York City, we vote on early voting is October twenty fourth. So, yeah, ours too, twenty fourth to twenty sixth. So, bees, you know, you're the most important out of all of us, man. So you got to make sure. Well, because I live in Texas. You have to Google right now early voting. Can you do that for me right now? Can you Google early yeah, hey, voting? Hey, the, hey, the good thing about I'm registered to vote in Texas, so I'm, I will be voting. So there this, you go. This, this man, this man is 38 years old, just got registered last week. Straight up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got registered. <laughs> I got registered a couple of years ago, but yeah. Yeah, when I had to renew my license, I got registered. That's what's up. Well, listen, we're in different times and uh, unique times. So, you know, I've never um, early uh, voted early before. And I was even ready to, uh, to put a ballot in if I had to. But uh, lucky for me, uh, it's around the corner, uh, the place I need to go to vote. And I want to be there in person. And this is, to me, uh, my um, most important um, civil rights and duty is to vote this year. But in saying that, gentlemen, how I think times are different, you know, uh, for soccer, it's been kind of crazy and erratic. Now we just came off the Nations League and a kind of an international weekend. A lot of players are coming back, uh, reported catching COVID. Um, I think the, the number one play we want to talk about, or at least have to mention, is Ronaldo. You'd think if anybody's protected and, and, and <laughs> making sure that he's as safe as anybody else in the world would be Ronaldo and Messi. Well, unfortunately, Ronaldo, the likes of Neymar, um, the likes of Thiago. Ibrahimovic got it. He, 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 I didn't realize he caught it too? Yeah, he yeah. caught it. You know, are these players just being reckless or is it um, just that dangerous out there and everybody uh, is kind of accessible to it? Well, no, I, I, don't I, 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 don't, I don't think they're being reckless. I mean, no, everybody yeah. knows the measures in regards to the closed stadiums and the severity. Well, let's say not everybody knows the severity, but yeah. I, I would believe that the, the sporting world with all their restrictions and regulations, understands the severity. Um, and it's just one of those things, like you don't know until you have it. You, a lot of people are asymptomatic um, and they say Cristiano was, so, you but know. What about, the, keep it real, right? Uh, this guy named Sam Johnson, a real Salt Lake, I believe, um, just got caught um, having a party. Uh, I think Bees was there. I, heard, I, heard, I think Bees <laughs> might be there now for the next one. Um, <laughs> You know, he, he, he uh, got caught having a party and obviously it was a fight and some gunshots went off. And this is a DP player for- Yo, I don't, I don't know if you want to call that a party, yo. That's like, that was a, that was a, that was a- Jamboree? Uh, yeah, not even, no, not even that. Something bigger than that. What do you call like, like something? Block party, boy. Yeah, he had over a hundred people. A hundred people. But you got to think about, a, this is Utah, right? So a hundred people can fit in your bathroom. <laughs> you got this space, bro. You know, but yeah, I mean, he had us full okay, out. Yeah, so so what you what you what you asked before? Yeah, there's some people that be that are reckless. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And there's some people that are they just they get it. You know, it's it's uh, that's why I, I believe that. I gotta so... believe that they're all being reckless bees. You don't just get it. You, if you're in confined in a bubble and you're you're um, a professional athlete playing one of the you know, top teams in in your country where you're playing, and there's no. You have to be doing something reckless to get it. it it's not coming inside the locker room. Well, right now they're not. Also, in, so you, so, right so now they're saying, not so in the bubble. You said Ronaldo was being reckless. How is he being reckless then? We don't know. But Ronaldo could have went to a party. You think Ronaldo was? Uh, he could have had a, a stripper come to his house. You don't know. He could have been <laughs> trying to be reckless now, with, 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 with his four with his four kids and his wife in the house. I mean, you ever see how big his house is? And, and he was on separate family on the other side of the house. Yeah, but look, and he was on international duty. You know what I'm saying? So I know that they had. I know. Okay. Yeah, we, we know about what happened in England with uh, Phil Foden and, and, exactly. and Greenwood. You know, they, exactly. they broke protocol. Okay, 
okay. But every every situation they like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure Ronaldo being a being an experienced veteran and being Ronaldo, he ain't gonna put himself in that situation in there. I don't know. Yes, you don't know either. So we just speculate and said, you know, oh well, everybody's just being reckless. That's how they're gonna get the, the that's how they get the virus. That's not true. I mean, you can just go to the store, you know what I'm saying, just do do grocery shopping and get the virus. It ain't it's not like you can uh, you got to be out at a party with so again, bees, people. again, bees, right? My statement was a person of the stature of Ronaldo's Latin, they're not going to the supermarket, brother. Those those feet are worth gold, they don't even get a, a pedicure because the feet is too expensive. Yeah, but look, look, look now, 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 uh, now other players on his team, what, what's his name that caught it? Uh, from the Western match? McKinney, Western our boy. It. I mean, we, five days ago, the Orlando City versus Columbus match was postponed because a bunch of the players on Columbus caught it. So it's, it's, it's one of those things you, you can speculate all you want about recklessness or not, but ultimately there are people that catch it without being reckless. And yeah. you know, they, they catch it. I, I, I agree with you, but I'm okay, saying so that's, what we, that's that the argument. These, no, but I'm saying these professional athletes on a high level have to be reckless to catch it because no, of no, I will all, say no. all the parameters, so all the help so, they have. Let's say, okay, let's say, so, so, okay, let's say, so okay. he, let, let's say Cristiano had it. He's training now. Weston has it. That doesn't mean that Weston was reckless. That means he came in contact with somebody that had it. You but know? here's the here's the real talk though. They get they get tested every day, right? So if he had it, he wouldn't have been on the pitch. That's not yeah, true. Yeah, but he was on international duty. That's Weston wasn't even nowhere near Cristiano Ronaldo. Because yeah. look, you could exactly. have, you have the virus. So, okay, so how okay, so my you point can't is, use, you my can't point use, is, so how is Ronaldo use, being reckless? You cannot use stop. the argument that they stop, were on the stop, pitch stop, and stop, it's got it by mistake. Stop. It had to be doing something that they could have. You're wrong. Stop doing. Stop using Why am I wrong? Because you're wrong. Because you How? don't know the specifics. Stop using have to, have to, because the virus goes through an incubation period, right, where it can't be detected. You can have the virus. It's been going through the incubation period. You get tested. It comes out negative. Two days later, you get tested. It's positive. That right? is true. So, so if that's true, then you're wrong. <laughs> Hold on. We both don't know. It's not wrong or right. We don't know. No, 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 no. We're saying we're going to yeah. use hypotheticals, but you said have to. No, so but I'm, I'm just saying that for me, right, as a person who, who, um, is not playing in a season, is not playing with a national team, that doesn't have all these things on the, on the line, that doesn't have all these situations around them to help you avoid catching COVID. You think Juventus is not doing the utmost they can to help to make sure Ronaldo doesn't catch um, the, the but virus? But he wasn't with Juventus. It's Portugal, the same thing. Okay. It's even worse. That's a country. So, okay, so you think, so, okay, let me ask you a straight up question. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm with Gooch. You, yeah. you are saying have to. you saying Ronaldo has to do something reckless. Right. Yes. That, that's that's what yes. you said. So you that's think what I'm saying. he did something reckless? Yes. To get... Okay. Yeah. I'm saying same thing for Tiago. So everybody in America, they gotta do something reckless to get. No. The yeah, that's what Jeez. you're saying. No. The point is them. These he's saying, individuals. He's saying, it's like he's the president. Professional the athletes. athletes. Professional like athletes the have to do something wrong. In yeah, order. but you don't know. You don't know that the hotel. The whole somebody in the hotel might have had it, and they might have might have gave it to somebody Definitely. else. But the percentage of you. Oh, uh, now we talk about percentage. Wow. Listen, listen, oh, wait, wait, listen. wait. If you're speaking percentage, tell us what the percentage is then. Listen, and, rec and reckless, we're we, we talking about reckless. Reckless don't mean they went out and just jumped in front of COVID. Reckless means you're doing something that get, can give you an opportunity or a chance of you catching COVID. So you what is the percentage? Doing. You said You should have been doing. Tell us what the percentage hanging out. is. Whatever. You should have been doing. So you think Ronaldo or international dude is hanging out. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell, he had a couple <laughs> holes in the, in the uh, hotel room. Hell yeah. He's away from his family. He did something reckless. Wow! That wow. Next, can we can we transition? Because you yeah, please, please. This is, please. This, is, this, this, is uh, this shit is giving me a headache. This is Fox News talk right here. I, I'm <laughs> done with this. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Blasphemy! You mentioned Fox News in here. So you, in connection <laughs> with you. <laughs> so the bigger conversation is: with this keep on going on and affecting the seasons, right? Affecting players coming back into uh, their team, affecting the quarantine. Um, this is going to carry on. It looks like it's a trend that's going to carry on for the rest of the season. Do you guys agree? Yeah, I do. You got, I mean, I think leagues and with the national team, Nations League, all, all the international uh, games that are coming up now, they're, I'm sure, I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm sure FIFA and every federation are prepared for canceling games. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's, it's, it's going to happen. Because, I mean, you see it in the Millet, you see it, you know, um, uh, in Europe. That people that 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 are team federations that are canceling game, can't canceling matches. So it's gonna happen. So I'm sure FIFA and those federations have something in plan. Okay, if this happens. Well, you know, we're gonna have reschedule it for this date or this date. It is gonna be Europe might 
turn into MLS playing game. I mean, they are doing it now, but even the smaller teams that don't play in Europe, they'll be playing Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, because some of those cancel some of those cancellations they're gonna have to make up. So it's gonna happen. It's just the way you gotta live now. The yeah, way you gotta live. And and how do you think it affects the the validation of the of the season in terms of if you have it multiple times, people having to quarantine for two weeks? And yeah, I mean it's, it's like just, you said, it's it's more just games same, compact. Yeah, it's just the same as what what the the European teams that were still in the Europe Europa Cup and the Champions League, what they had to do. You know, one had one they had to go to Germany, they had to quarantine, they had to try to be on their P's and Q's, and they got through it without any hiccups. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So it's going to be. Uh, I don't know if it'll go to that to that to that measure uh, because there's too many teams, too many players, and all that stuff. People in and out. But I mean, I'm sure, like I said, they they have something in 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 motion that if if all that stuff happens, there's a plan B. I don't know what that plan B is, but I'm yeah. sure that there is a plan B. Because everything's the, the rate is spiking up in Europe like crazy. So yeah, that's, yeah, that's most. I, I know Holland just shut down their the country again. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. spoke to so, somebody from Belgium. They said they're in. They're basically, they decide today how they're going to shut down. Um, people in London and England, and Manchester, told me that they're about to go back into where they were back in March. Wow! Right. right. You know, if 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 that's a prelude to things, and it trickles down to us, I mean, or it, it already has in certain states. Like we could be entering another full shutdown again. Well, the good thing about MLS is that it's coming. The season is kind of hopefully coming to the you know spiral a little bit. When is when is MLS season supposed to finish? The same, right? November. Yeah, yeah something like that. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the I think the eighth. I want to say the eighth is the last game. I don't know for sure. Y'all probably know more than me on that, but I I don't know. But I think it's the eighth, and then media man to the playoff. I don't know. I told you, y'all know me. I don't I don't watch. Listen, MLS, MLS doesn't out. cover MLS, man. So we can't talk his business to know about MLS. <laughs> but 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 in, in reality, talking about the MLS, um, you know, we spoke about the young players in in, in the United States who are played in Europe. That I be named last. Um, last podcast, and we spoke a little bit about them, but in, out of respect for the MLS and the players that's here and the homegrown, there's been a lot of great talent that's kind of come to uh, fruition this this season and kind of made their mark to help their teams win. Uh, I want to mention certain players like Mark McKenzie, who is uh, a center back who I think has came out of the school of uh, uh, Gucci and Yewu. while uh, he, he spent his time at Philadelphia Union, who speaks very highly of Mark. Uh, we also have Fontana, who's another player out of Philadelphia Union. And I want to say another player who's very interesting is, and B's don't want to give him no credit, is Caden Clark. What? A, why a, you, why do you say a, that? He's a 17-year-old from wow. Minnesota who, uh, wow. who, who, due to Minnesota not having a USL program, um, they traded his rights over to the Red Bulls. He played uh, USL 2 for, low, I mean, USL for a little while in the championship with the Red Bulls 2. And now he scored two, go- two goals in two games. Um, you know, Gooch, being a, a veteran, and Mark has been a veteran in the league. Are you happy to see these seventeen-year-olds and eight-year-olds getting an opportunity and a chance? I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention a couple of things. One, Mark is my man, my little protege. That's my man. I can't wait for him to, to, to go to Europe because it's gonna happen, right? Secondly, B, in regards to your reaction, you know, Mook loves to hop on somebody's train as soon as he scores a goal. so 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 if somebody can score a goal he's gonna say that's the next so and so let's say that this 17 year old is doing well right at such a young age and say he needs to continue not say oh he's the next thing because he scored two goals right Uh, I think that if he continues on this path yeah we can talk to talk about him but is he in the same category as a 17 year old uh, uh, Gio Reyna who is scoring consistently and having consistent assists for a Bundesliga club Absolutely not. You can't. My, my thing is, I just want to give props to the players here. You know what I mean? We all, everybody look at Gio. Yo, you're going to have a Gio. But to, to be successful, especially the U.S. national team, we got to make sure that we have. Um, yeah, three, no, no. I'm saying two, that two obviously three. the man at such a young age, to be a teenager and contribute to any professional team, that's a big thing, right? I would just say, like, just not to get overzealous and think that, it's going to continue. He has to have a pattern, right? It has to be a habit. And I, hopefully he grows into that. And obviously he's going to dip because that's what young players do. Um, kind of like a roller coaster. But right now, obviously, everybody's eyes are on him because he's so young and he scored consecutive games and goals. And, and, and I love it. You know, yeah. I think that this, you know, the last World Cup, we didn't qualify. Everyone's like, damn, what happened to, to, <laughs> to our player pool? 
And then, you know, if you look at even the, the last U20 cycle in 19, how many of those players are playing in top leagues in Europe, no right? Doubt. Um, yeah. and, and contributing in the MLS now. So I think that the future of, of our country's soccer program um, is bright. Um, the current status remains to be seen, but I definitely believe that we have a lot of talented young, young players. Wait, wait, wait. Let me let me clear something up real quick. Oh, though. go ahead. This guy. Because I, I don't want I don't want people out there saying I, I had something bad about uh Caden Clark. I was teasing Beasley. I, I, okay, but bad. listen, listen, <laughs> listen here, listen here. All I said was I'd never seen him play, which a lot of people haven't yet. I saw him, I saw his goals. That was it. I think uh, I I don't know. I mean, I all, I'm I'm the same as y'all. I read what people say about him. You know, he signed. Uh, day before he scored against Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? Like he's, he signed his contract and the next day he's, he's starting. Oh, oh, I, I don't know if he started, but he came on and he scored in the yeah. next game. He scored. That's all I know. <laughs> that is literally all I know about, about the kids. So, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously now he's on everyone's radar. So we're going to keep watching him, uh, keep watching him play, watching him grow. So I'm excited to see a full game of, of Caden Clark. So. And, and fellas, the reason I brought it up is because um, the MLS uh, just released a statement saying they're going to bring back the MLS Reserve League. Now, you guys are veterans, and you guys can remember the Reserve League before um, the USL, and they merged with the USL. Gooch, um, Gooch can't. He, he started yeah, he was, his, yeah, he his, wasn't. Uh... Yeah, but he, at least he was old enough to be around, God damn it. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but my question to you is that we, we've seen these 17-year-olds, 18-year-olds now getting the opportunity to play in the MLS on the first team and, and doing well. Is that a clear result? from having the USL and having these reserve teams playing the US, USL against grown, pe- grown men and getting that competition, getting that game, game, in, game week and week experience, right? At, at something that matters. Now the MS reserve, my concern is that one day is gonna be U23, which is great uh, because it, it'll definitely focus on the younger players, but also will the games matter? And I think that's a key for development of young players is playing in, in games in an environment where it does matter and something's on the line. And the MS Reserve. Is there? In the USL. I mean, they're playing in USL 1, USL Championship. So that's the league? They're playing in USL League 1. Who? The MLS. No, yeah. not all. Not, yeah, not yeah all of them. most of the second teams. Of the I thought it was separate. Now, most of that, like, for example, you have Red Bull 2 playing in championship. You have Portland right. playing in championship. Right, you have, right. I got uh, that part. Battles. But then you have some teams that are playing in the League 1, like League Orlando, one. Orlando right. City, right? right? And so now, basically, what's happening is they're reintroducing this league that basically happened back in the day when we had Project 40, right? Um, where if the second teams of MLS choose to, they can withdraw their teams from the USL leagues. Um, or they have the they have the opportunity and the the option to remain in it. So of a, of 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 a couple of days ago, I've heard that Orlando City's taken them out. Uh, I think there's two more teams that decided to withdraw from the USL affiliation. So I'm with Mookie. Like I think that having hold on uh, hold on hold on what he say? Oh, this guy. <laughs> I, I'm right. with Mauricio in regards to how the USL in regards to the hierarchy right now was assisting these players in terms of development. There's something to be said with uh, young players playing in a respected professional league against men and improving their ability versus uh, under 23s playing against other under 23 players. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, yeah, but is this, so, okay, is this league, yeah, it's um, gonna be an under is it going to be okay, but is it going to be like, like in Europe, you know, even though you're in, Division two or Division three, there's still a champion at the end of that. You're not going to go up because you're still a fit right. There's right. Gonna, but is there a champion at the end of this tournament? Well, or well, le- let's league? assume let's assume that they're going to have a champion at the end, but it's still ultimately under 23s playing against under 23s, unless the first team has a couple players that are either need minutes or injured that need to jump into there. Similar, same as as uh, overseas, right? It's the same thing um, in the English Premier League, right? The the second the reserve league is U23. So even your old ass bees, you can if you were on Houston and you got hurt, you can still play U twenty three. But that's the majority of the players that have to be under twenty three years old. So yeah, no, I get it. Yeah, so so the great thing what some teams like Philadelphia are already doing is that they're eliminating the U nineteens and now they're having those kids from seventeen on 
if you're good enough, you'll play with the U23s and get a chance to play with you know, older players. So um, a funny thing, it sounds like that what they're doing is, is similar to the USL Academy and how they had basically came up with that, the system of, you know, the best players from 15 to 19 are going to play in this one league. Exactly. And, exactly. So, yeah. So are they basically <laughs> they're competing and copying each other's uh, blueprint? What's the deal? Gooch, I, you, that's know that, you know point. they don't like each other. <laughs> but they work with each other. The, yeah, like each other. Like, work, yeah. That's like, like, that's like us. We don't, I don't yeah. like y'all. <laughs> we'll, we'll like each other, but we have to work together. Shit. That's, that, it is what it is. Yo. Yo, but Gucci hit on the head. I didn't, I didn't think about that. The USL was the first ones to announce that, that, yeah. that transition in the academy. And I think the MLS like, oh, shit. Good idea. All right. <laughs> oh, man. No, nah, but, um, speaking, but speaking of Project 40, what I remember of Project 40, because I was a part of that. Like when I first came and signed with uh well time with LA, but then I went to Chicago and I was going to school and playing at the same time. Uh right when I finished my my senior year of high school, um, I was I, I you know I started with Chicago. I was going, but then at the in the beginning of it, beginning of my career, I wasn't playing the minutes that I, I was when I first first started with Chicago. And uh so I got sent down to the Project 40. But that the Project 40 was it was a joke. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't I mean, we had, there was, you know, a lot of young, good players, this and that, but on the road when we played games, like we went, to, I remember we went, to, we went to Argentina, we went to different places around the world, I played different club teams around the world. Uh, but I mean, it was, it was fun. It wasn't serious. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, it wasn't as, like, if we lost, it was like, oh man, you know, we, something's going to happen or, you know, there was no pressure. It was just, you know, we all got, we're all there, we're all, we're all here for a reason because we're, we're not playing our, 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 our first team and we're just going to play, you know, it was, it was fun. It was fun. So when you talk about pressure and, and there was zero, I don't know if it's going to be the same as that. I hope not because it was for me, the, the project 40, um, it was good in the sense that you did get games because you played against, I remember playing against, you know, Boca juniors, we went to Argentina and playing against, you know, San Lorenzo playing against good teams. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you know, it's, it's friendly. It didn't mean much. You know right. what I'm saying? So I hope that, like you said, you know, the pressure is still on that they got to win and there's some kind of incentive in it or, you know, not as you got to, you don't have more than just, oh, you're going to go down and get a game. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. every, every player, and we know, because we've been, we players, if you're 23 or you're um, a a veteran and going down to play with the 23, maybe because you're injury, you're injured, sorry. And you maybe need some fitness. He's gonna go through the motions. Right. That's it's, it is what it is. That's that's the truth of it. You know what I'm saying? So if there's no pressure, which I don't know, because you know I'm not I'm not to say I'm, I'm the first one to know everything about this league. That because you know I probably should be, but I don't, and I, I'm not afraid to say that. No, but it's, it's not even that though. But but you had firsthand experience in your development. And are you telling us is it better to have be in a pressure environment or a non pressure? I think if it's done right. No, I just think if it's done right, it, it, it can be beneficial. Hundred percent. Mm-hmm. 100%. I'm just saying the P the P40, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was it, it, it was good because we got to play against um, uh, other good youth youth players around the, around the world, not even just in America, around the world. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That was a good part. We got to travel. We got to you know hang out with kids that were the same age as you. Well, not me because I was 17 and you know everybody else is 20, 22, 23. You know what I'm saying? So that part was cool, but there was no you know, incentive to kind of, you know, play well. It was just like, we have, you just play with your boys, which is cool, but it's, it was no, and that, and that's you know my what I'm saying? That's concern, concern, Gooch, is that, you know, you as a person who's been in the back staff, you know that, you know, especially the, the League Two players, or the, the uh, MLS Two teams, what do they tell those players, right? And can you develop at a high level when you don't have that type of responsibility to win games where it's just like, you know, just get him some sweat, work on a couple of things. I mean, it's good and bad. That's why I really need to tap into I you think guys. Right now, I think right now it's going to be a, it's going to be a huge question mark, right? Because yeah. we know that they had an iteration of this back in the day and Bees was just explaining how, you know, he took part in it a little bit and it's just going to be a question of how they form it, how it's going to be, because I mean, you can't be blind to the fact that, you know, there was, um, some a lot of positive notes of these young players developing against these older men, whether win or lose. You know they're yeah. playing against better, physical, stronger individuals, and yeah. you know pressure pressure makes diamonds, yeah. right? And so um, 
Yeah, yeah. Well, it doesn't, hopefully it doesn't. But the, but the one thing, but the one thing I, I will say that was different with PJ P40 is that we they were it was you know two or three players from one team, two or three players from one team, two or three players from one team, one player from other team. You know what I'm saying? So that part was whole totally different. You know, now I can see the difference because you're going in with your team. You know, your club is going to watch you play. You know what I'm saying? Like so, maybe that gives the player more incentive to go out and do well because they're with the club and they can get to the first team. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And before it was more so the the, the coaches couldn't really watch how you played. Yeah. You know, because we'd be in Argentina and you just they would talk to the coach and say, okay, how did Demarcus play? Yeah. And the coaches say this and this and this. But then you got a you got a guy from from LA Galaxy. You got two guys from the Columbus Crew. You got another guy from uh, DC United. You know what I'm saying? So we just all got put together and it was like an all star youth team. That's yeah. that's the, that was a difference between people. That, and that's why and I don't want to get it twisted. That's why I said well, that's why I said hey, that it was not a joke. It was just it wasn't serious. You know what I'm saying? It was more of a fun trip to go play to get some games against good competition. So I think it can be different uh, as far as, you know, the, the, the teams being in uh, under one league and being under one roof. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Out. We'll see. We'll see soon enough. Because, you know, the one thing we focus on and one of the things, the main reasons why we're here every week, um, talking to our listeners and, and, uh, and broadcasting is that, you know, we care so deeply about the development and the growth of youth soccer in America. Right. That's the number one importance. And, and we want to make sure that we keep on uh, pushing the envelope, but also supporting the next generation of footballers that come up. And we do it, you know, all each and all, all of us, you know, are heavily invested in that. So I want to make sure everybody's clear and listeners are clear. Um, but talking about heavily invested, I would love to go into our Say what? What? segment um, speaking about somebody in a family that has been major major investors inside of the mls and one of and obviously the founders which is the hunt family um recently our podcast uh had a little bit of controversy where one of our guests um spoke about a situation in, in playing for fc dallas and i want to reiterate and go through the whole story but in, in, a, in a long end the short end is that reggie cannon um has claimed and we support him that he was asked by his former club, FC Dallas, to make a statement apologizing for calling fans disgusting who booed him and his teammates for kneeling and also throw, threw things on the field for kneeling. And um, Dan Hunt, who is the head honcho over there at FC Dallas, um, came out with a statement. Um, and I want you guys to hear it. Want to hear it? Here you go. First, I want to be clear on this. There were no written comments that were pushed upon Reggie. That's really inconsistent with our values here at this club and that kind of taking away a freedom of speech that has really bad implications. And that's something that you know we are not associated with. That's not in our core values for me and my brother Clark. Um, and I, I was sorry to hear those comments, but we met with Reggie the day after the game and talked to him about upcoming media opportunities and how he wanted to go through this and provide different opportunities. And he declined those opportunities. Those are well within his right and respect him. We love Reggie Cannon. He's an unbelievable young man. He was a great player here. Um, and I was just sorry to hear that. Yeah, man. We um, wanted, wanted to give Dan the opportunity to you know keep it fair and play Dan's statement. Um, he made this statement on uh, right before the FC Dallas last game um, with the broadcaster. And how do you guys feel about Dan's reply? And uh, where does FC Dallas go from here? I'll let Bees take that first. <laughs> where did they go? Uh, I mean, now it's just about he said, she said. I mean, that, that is what it is. I, I think he's calling his, his former player a liar, though. Right? He's saying What's that, that he's calling his former player a liar. Yeah, no, no, exactly. And we, to be honest, we don't know who, who is. Uh, I don't want to say lying. I mean, I guess you can say lying. You know, uh, but somebody's lying here, right? For me, yeah, somebody's lying. But I mean, for me, I I stay with Reggie. I don't think he would go on our podcast or any platform and say lies about what how he was treated and, and what was said to him after that uh, that incident and during the national anthem. Um, I, I, I know, I know, I know Reggie uh, a little bit just some, from how he carries himself, how he is as a man, a family man at that. So, I mean, I, yeah, I can't see, um, uh, Reggie lying to us on, uh, 
public platform just to for what i mean what is he gaining out of that you know i, I don't see the i don't see the end of it and with with uh mr hunt's comments he didn't really deny it i mean he denied it but he didn't you know all, all he said it's was written, written. Uh, we 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 uh we uh gave him some some uh some guidelines to and he you know respectfully declined what were those guys what did you say you know what i'm saying he didn't really actually say what was said or what you get what what fc dallas put in front of reggie for him to say no mm. you know what i'm saying so it's kind of him saying no but yes at the same time so he doesn't want to you know kind of put himself in in the in the back and what and that's what he is kind of in doing right now to be honest definitely, definitely. so has anybody ever known Reggie Cannon to be a controversial person, player, anything? Never, never. You'd hear crickets, right? This man has been stand up. And he also said, uh, in the say what? He's like, we love Reggie Cannon here. And then you're not going to love somebody that's been causing you trouble uh, the whole time, right? So for me, I, there was no reason for Reggie to make that statement when he did, right? Because he, we all know that we held that interview for a time. It wasn't after he got transferred that he just decided to unload. This happened while he was at FC Dallas, True. Uh, right after the, the incident. So there was, there was no reason for him to feel uh, slighted in any way about the transfer or anything, because this all happened way before the transfer even took place. Yeah, he could have he just been like, yo, you know what? Don't release it. Exactly. And if you listen to our podcast, Reggie said, initially the day after they prepared a statement for me to say, right? He didn't like, and that was his first thing, initially. And so what I, I know a little something because spoken to a couple of people, if they're denying this, I would like them to deny that a Miss Gina Miller, who is the VP of media at FC Dallas, deny that she called reggie and read him the prepared statement that he said he didn't want to do mm. i guarantee they can't deny it because we all know that she did and they and she's contacted him on behalf of fc dallas exactly and, she's just the and just like he said reggie declined the media that they offered to him of course they denied it and he just said they denied it right and that's that's yeah exactly that's what i said but you said it's better than i did Right. I mean, <laughs> let, let, let's, be real. let's be real. Reggie's not a controversial person. He felt deeply about something that happened. And for them to come with their initial statement of he needs to apologize to the fans that he offended, that's ridiculous. That's BS. So for me, I'm all on Reggie's side. He has no reason to lie. But FC Dallas right now has every reason in the world to deny this, right? Because there's extreme backlash if they don't, right? extreme we saw what happened with uh, the owner of utah yeah <laughs> you know what i mean yep. so for me i'm, I'm already i think we had a yeah uh, but the, the dude from utah did he, he didn't deny nothing though did he well i know i'm just saying like <laughs> he said <laughs> he was like he's like fuck it all right i'm out <laughs> yeah but you see the implications of what happened afterwards right and I'm yeah, sure yeah 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 Dallas yeah. don't want that to happen to them but right. you know, the hunt family has a long history right in the game uh in the united states in athens pro sports as a whole if you don't know uh, the Hunt family also owns Kansas City Chiefs, right? Um, and and they and they've been their father. Um, you know, he, he's he's left a legacy for the kids, uh, a long legacy, for the kids to follow behind. But there's a lot of frustration, and a lot of people are frustrated with with Dan Hunt and the way he's run FC Dallas. But FC Dallas has put out a lot of talent. Um, they're strong in the academy, and he has invested a lot of money in FC Dallas. So again. You know, people saying he's trying to protect his money by asking Reggie to apologize. But the problem is that you're thinking about the, your money over the, the, person. the person, right? And, and that's the major problem that we have to kind of correct and change, right? Is that, um, you know, the athlete is just not an athlete. He's a person. And sometimes these owners look at the, you guys and look at athletes as just people who are just supposed to run and shut up, you know? And, and, and uh, I think it was huge for Reggie to be brave, to stand up. And I think he's going to give a lot of confidence and to a lot to the next athlete who's been, who's, who has been a victim of unjust within his club and who's scared to come out. 
And now the question to you guys, if Reggie wasn't, didn't have the opportunity to leave, even though what you said, Gooch, he still had the opportunity coming to him. If Reggie had another five years and he wasn't able or good enough to go to Europe, would have he said something on our podcast? And, and, and that's, that's the tough part. Gooch, have you gone through issues at any club that you played for throughout your career that you wanted to say something, but you were in fear? No, nah, I mean, I've, I've had some racial issues a couple times, you know, in Belgium. Uh, one time a fan punched me after saying some things. My club backed me standardly as they backed me. They found a person with video. They banned him from the, from the stadiums. Um, you know, I, I, I filed a, uh, a procedure against a player because he said some things to me and I was backed, right? Um, but, you know, obviously, you, you see in the interview – his comment came off of the cusp of Bees' question saying, did you feel supported? Yeah. Right. And obviously he did not feel supported yeah. uh, in regards to that. He had to release that information. And you could see that he was kind of edgy to release that information. He's like, I don't, you know, this could hurt me. I'm, I'm trying to leave. I don't know if this, you know, so he was, he was hesitant. And he said, I've never told anybody this. Right. And I felt, at that moment, after listening to the interview, I felt good that we, we provided him that safe zone platform that he felt that he could come and tell us this because he needed to get it off his chest. You know what I'm saying? So, your, your, your bees, in your career, have you ever had a club prepare a statement for you? You don't have to be racial, nothing like that. Just anything in general. Has you ever had a club, in your 40 years of playing, you ever had a club prepare a statement? <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think, not off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there is a statement. Um, no, there wasn't. There wasn't a statement with uh, when my car got blown up in Rangers. Uh, <laughs> there wasn't a there wasn't an official statement at that. But I mean, I never I, internally without having a public statement, I always yeah. felt um, protected by the club. You know, whenever anything came about, any kind of um, things that happen off the field or even on the field. Um, I didn't, off the top of my head, I can't think of a club not supporting me and uh, and what, what we're trying to, I can't trying to achieve. Trying to achieve, yeah, yeah man. So, so uh, again, um, you know, I think, I think it is history. I think it's something that's monumental because it hasn't really have happened in the MLS. And hopefully this avoids or teaches clubs how to go about. And if this situation happens again, they'll know how, what not to do. All right. And, um, and, and accordingly, also, I hope the players feel a little more confident to speak up because it, it's, yeah, you, you're speaking up for yourself, but you're also giving encouragement and also helping the next generation, the next person who's going through what you go through. And, um, you know, I think in any employment, anytime you have a job, right, and you have some type of injustice or some type of um, wrongdoing, that you should make, make sure you should be able to speak up and um, have an HR department that can support you or a union that can support you, you know. So, uh, but, but Yo, uh, before you even go to that, uh, I don't think y'all really actually heard me. I just said my car got blown up and neither one of y'all said nothing. Y'all just, y'all, y'all just think that's a normal, that's, that's just normal with you. Yes. Like, yeah. You ain't gonna say like bees. You all right. What happened? I mean, I ain't gonna tell you the story of what happened, but bees, tell us the story. What happened. I just said my car got blown up and neither one of y'all blinked an eye because we knew you weren't going to tell the story. So why talk about neither it? Neither one of y'all blinked an eye. Neither one of y'all, oh, word. What happened? Like how, how, who? You won't hey, keep hey, it I, real for the no, crack. B, this the is the crack. What's the happen? What happened? Nothing. Your time, B. <laughs> Your time, B. Your time, B. Next subject. Go. Oh, Next topic. Man. Oh, man. Listen, um, one of, uh, speaking about, um, you know, your car getting blown up in Europe, but uh, former Man City player, Mr. Rabinho, um, Brazilian legend, uh, one of the best players that I've seen play uh, or closest to Ronaldinho. Um, had a long career, and after Turkey, decided to go back home to play for Santos. Big up Santos, one of my favorite clubs in Brazil. But they're going through a lot of financial heartache. And my guy, he, I, wonder, I don't know if you guys know this story. My guy is playing for $219 a month. Signed a contract with the club that, that he was raised in, the club that he, that he made his start on before he went to Europe. And Aguchi Onyewu. Could, would you ever play for any team for $219 a month? Listen, um, me personally, no. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not playing for nobody for that minimum wage. I think he said, I think they said it's slightly over 
the minimum wage in Brazil. In Brazil, period, which is which, so, is which is crazy. But I would never play for anybody for minimum wage for su simple reasons. Maybe there's that uh, emotional bond with the club, obviously. And that's uh, why, I'm, yeah, that's what we asked. This is the third time that he's put, played with the club, right? And so he doesn't, he's made his money. He doesn't really care. It's more about the, the, the sign of playing with them. But <clears throat> the risk that you put your body through just by playing and the injury potential, not happening. Not happening. It's not about love, Gooch. It's about love. It's not no, about money. I, I exactly. love my legs. I love my legs. The mark is busy. It's not about money. It's not about love. The it's not about money. It's not about You're one year out of a tie. The admiration you have for the club. That you play go, go pay. Are you going to play, uh, play for Puebla for free? For free? No. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah, hey, for, for minimum wage. But Beasy, listen, you're one year out of retirement, right? Um, you know, you, you retired from Houston and a team that you love, Chicago Fire, said, listen, we'd love to have you, right? You started there, but you got to pay for $219 a month. What do you want to tell Chicago Fire? <laughs> I would tell them, hell no. Nah. <laughs> but that's, that's one that's one club, though. I, okay. Where would I think, you? Where would you? Where would I? Okay, let me go ahead. Before we go to Chicago, if, if Chicago Fire still had the same ownership and the same um, office staff as when I first started, then yeah. I probably would. Because I know there's a lot of, uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I don't know the guys that are there now. I mean, I've heard different things, but as far as, um, uh, that I would just say, well, because you brought up Chicago, I would just say if they had the same um, backstaff they did back then when I was playing, then, then maybe. But if I had to pick one, then it would be PSV. Woo! Right. I mean, we all have those clubs, right? So so, no, 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 but I'm saying, but no, but no, 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 but I'm saying, but it's not about the football. I'm talking about how how I got treated. In, That's what in, I'm saying. I'm like, saying we all have those clubs. Yeah. Like, so if, if there I was a middle way situation, I would, I would, I, I would could say in theory, yeah, Liege or Sporting. But in reality, like the, the stress, because even though you're getting minimum wage, you're putting 100% stress on your body. And the, yeah, the, yeah, but Gooch, but Gooch, yeah, but you don't love, need that, but, you got, but you got, but you made your money. You don't need, you, you still got, uh, you can buy your own masseuse. You can buy your own, because you know, nowadays it's, you got to outsource. Yeah. You, yeah. Surgeries. you got to. Surgeries, huh? surgeries, injuries. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, buddy. <laughs> yeah, but uh, okay, but I'm just saying, you know, you can still, well, I mean, the club is going to pay for that. You get Okay, if they, get, if uh, they pay for that, and I, I okay. Why are you going to get, gonna get hurt? Health insurance? Why are they going to get hurt, Gooch? Because you get hurt all the time. Bees, you've been hurt. You had a serious knee injury. That, that happened fluke. I tore my patella jumping. That was a really fluke thing. You know, the injuries happen. You know, and yeah, but the club gonna have health insurance. You'll have that covered. I'm just saying for the other stuff, like you know, what I'm saying to take care of your body, you're gonna have probably have a nutritionist. I'm sure. I don't know what Rubinho has, but I'm sure he has enough money to to buy or all have right, a, right, a right. suit. I, I can dig have it. a I chef. I can have a nutritionist. I can dig it. I can dig it. Right. I can dig it. If I if I had, uh, we gonna go deeper into the conversation right. and not just you right. know what I'm saying. If just I, if say, I had, okay, right. is there a club that you play for minimum wage and then that's it? They're gonna answer right. the question. We're done. I can if see I, your point, but I'm if saying I had Beez, if I had Beez's wallet, then the two. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I'm broke. <laughs> the two clubs, it would be there. If he's saying no, 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 not two, one. Pick one. One. Now you now you sound like me being indecisive. Well, Pick you one. you you said regardless of the the backroom staff, the president, and all that stuff. Yeah. Like even if they've changed and all that. Yep. What's your heart? And you can say, or you can say no. I love the club. Oh man! Or it two. might not be a club you play for. Two. I got two. I got, I got Liege and Sporty. You have Honestly, to pick one. one. You can't yeah. pick two teams. That's just reality. <sighs> That's next topic. Next topic. Uh, no. <laughs> Yo, we, we call our hot seat is called the glow. So you're under the glow. <laughs> what is the? That's a hard thing. I, I, I'm, I'm going to go for Liege because you know Belgium citizenship. Spent longest time there. Um, but obviously it could go either way. I love both clubs. But basically, I mean, you basically said no to be on, to begin with. So yeah, if it was just point blank period, boom. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. yeah. All right, that's fair enough. Fair enough. But if I had your wallet, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> you don't want my wallet, brother. <laughs> so, Bees, how you dealing with retirement? How you dealing with you know watching the season go and knowing that last year this time we were all at your last game. Um, celebrating you guys, uh, you guys victory or you drew with LA Galaxy? No, we won, we won 4-2. Uh, 
the hot ass day. Yeah. Was he even at the game talking? I know, probably not. He's probably drunk in the suite somewhere. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> it was hot that day though, so it I know was y'all. Hot. I know y'all inside inside drinking. So, dude, so let me tell you something, man. If if if. If we wasn't in the suite, there's no way I'm staying in that game for, for, for 90 minutes. <laughs> that shit was like, it was, I, I'm Jamaican. I love the heat. That was something different, man. That was something different. But, 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 Bees, how you feeling with that, brother? How, how, what's, what's I your, mean, you I mean, to be honest, that? you slide tackle your daughter in the kitchen sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. I, to be honest, I, I really thought I was going to get that itch. You know what I'm saying? Like, itch to come back, like after a month or after two months. Yeah. Uh, because physically and, I'm not just saying that for me. I mean, people can say just from it being in Houston and, you know, how people saw me physically, I could still, I could have played another year. Yeah. A, a million percent. I had no problem with my body and how I, how I took care of my body, like the last probably four years of my career. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know I, I, I could have went one more year, but mentally I was, I was out of it. You know what I'm saying? So I think because of, uh, I, I retired on my own merit and it wasn't, um, uh, something that made me retire or I had to retire, that's why I didn't get that itch. You yeah. know? So I, I feel, I mean, do I miss the game? Yeah. I miss the game. I, I miss, you know, playing, playing those big games, I, you know, Champions League or even, you know, the, the, the finals that I got to play in, you know, win or lose, you know, you, you obviously want to play in those, in those type of, those type of matches, but did I feel, or do I feel the need to put on the boots and like go suit up again? No. And you I haven't had that feeling, and it's been think, a year. You think it being the COVID season, a COVID, uh, yeah, COVID season. You got to call it what it is, a COVID season. Nah, I, I, it would have been better for me because I wouldn't have to play that much. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I would have got paid, and I wouldn't have, I wouldn't even but, have but to you, play that much. But, but you'd have to think about your daughter's safety. So yeah, you know. no, exactly. And I already told you, if I, if, that, if, I got, if I got asked to go to Orlando in the bubble, I wouldn't have went. You would have went. I wouldn't have went. I wouldn't have went. So that I don't know how, how that would have affected my – the, the sal- my salary and all that, which is, you know, whatever. That's all hypothetical. But uh, I, I told y'all before in our first couple episodes, I wouldn't have went if that was the case. You know, I would have opted out and would rather stay with my daughter. So that was that, that was going to be my answer. Uh, let, let's talk about Freddie Adu, who's continuing his soccer career over in Sweden. Sweden? Yes, yeah, Sweden. He just signed for a third division in Sweden. He recently put on his Twitter how he's so blessed and ready to continue his chapter of a footballer. Let's get a big round of applause for Freddie Adu. Now, Goose, you are GM here. You are sporting director, right? Who the hell is, is, giving, is hiring a, a 31-year-old footballer who hasn't played in, what, three, four years? Two years, I think. Two years? Well, actually, but he, he hasn't actually played. Like, he played, but he wasn't playing. Last, the last time True. he played was USL Championship two years ago. Um, and he hasn't really had a good season for the last seven years, right? Well, Who the hell? You, you're, you're just guessing a the timeline there. You could go even further, perhaps. Further I don't know. <laughs> Who the hell is saying, listen, let's go to the States and pick up Freddie Adu and bring him into a third division Swedish team? Um, I guess he's playing for the same amount of money Rabino's playing for. All right, so <laughs> Freddie got signed. News broke a couple of days ago. Out of nowhere, this man rose from the ashes. Nobody, <laughs> nobody knew where he was all this time. And Freddie signed in Europe. That was the headlines. Freddie's going back to Europe. Then the more details came out that he's signing for um, a Swedish team, Osterlin, uh, which is in the Swedish third division, essentially. So which would be USL League One in America. Uh, Freddie released a statement saying, you know, he's, he's happy to have the opportunity and do things right, you know. And for me, <laughs> for anybody, as we spoke, you know, when a player ends his career, not on his terms, there's always going to be that, 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 yeah. that itch, right? Yeah. And I feel as though Freddie in himself feels like, you know, he didn't end on his, he hasn't ended yet on his terms. Yeah. Um, so... For him, um, I, I congratulate him, and I'm happy that he had another opportunity in any level, that somebody trusted him on any level, because our, 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 arguably everybody said, look, this dude's done. Nobody wants him. Nobody's going to sign him, right? So at the end of the day, it's the opportunity that he gets. Me personally, I think it all depends on the details of the signing. What, like, what is this team's aspirations? Um, 
what are they trying to do? Are they trying to go up? Um, is it a market? They recently, they recently got promoted. So they they recently got promoted. Are they still trying to go up? Do they still, do they want to raise the awareness of the team? Because arguably speaking, you know, as, his, his good, name still holds as, good, or bad, as good or bad as uh, Freddie has been in his career, his name holds weight at, at a certain degree. Like you, still, let, let me say, not, maybe, maybe not weight, but you still know who Freddie Adu is. Still, right? it's, you, we're bringing, we're talking about it now, aren't we? Yeah, but if we know Freddie, exactly. yeah, but what? There's no but. There's, if it's yes, there's Sweden, no but. Sweden nah, remembers who Freddie Adu, Adu is. Listen. I, I, mean, oh, I don't know. Still, we're yeah, we're speaking about, about him now, so it is relevant to a degree. Otherwise, he, we wouldn't even be talking about it, right? So Freddie Adu has a history, has a name in U.S. soccer, for good or for bad. Like, whether you think he's a success or a failure, you know who Freddie Adu is. Um, so what he wants to do now at 31 years old, after not playing uh, competitively for so long, I don't know. I haven't spoken to Freddie. Uh, but what I will say is that if it was me, if I was a, you know, aggressive GM and I'm trying to like bring my team to the next level, I'd be hella skeptical to bring this kid in who has shown, shown on multiple leagues, countries, even in America, that he did not at the time have what it takes. Yeah. Uh, what, what that negotiation went through, I don't know. But at the end of the day, he got his contract. He got his move. He's going to see. And, and, and honestly speaking, for us spectators, we can sit back and be like, all right, well, let's see what happens now in the saga of Freddie in the third division in Sweden, right? If, if nothing comes out of this, then we can kind of just wash our hands and be like, all right, well, let's, let's not do this again. Let's not come out of retirement four times. And uh, let's But you know what? You know, at first when I saw it, I laughed, but then I have to say, you know what? At least the kid is getting a chance to play some ball, right? And, and as you can know, as footballers and people who love the game, at the end of the day, he didn't get a chance to retire the way he wanted to. And if he can get a chance to have a full season, have some fun, score some goals, and beat up on some third division players in Sweden, uh, more power to you, Freddie. You know, hopefully you get what you wanted. Yeah. also want to give a shout out to Grant Wall and um, his series he has with Freddie coming out. Uh, podcast series. So you guys go check that out. If you don't know who Freddie Adu is, I'm sure some of your listeners might not know or remember, right? So go see his whole story in detail, how many countries he's been been through, how many coaches, how many teams. Yeah, I mean, his he's journey still is young, definitely a movie. The youngest player to ever sign to the MLS at 14 years old, right? A movie. His journey is definitely so, a movie, man. It's oh. uh, congratulations to him. I do want to give a shout out to Black Players for Change and uh, Ray Gaddis, who recently put up on the, his Instagram that, you know, they're opening Subaru Stadium as a voting location in Philly um, for that uh, county in Chester that they have, you know, now more options and locations of where they can do their voting. So that, I think that's a big, uh, big win for them and big win for, for, everybody. for Black Players for Change. And for, yeah, everybody <laughs> to be able to you know, add a site, a pop-up voting site in that is so big in that community. Like you can't say you don't know where it is, right? right, right. <laughs> so uh, great work and great work for Ray Gaddis and the rest of the Black Players for Change for, for putting that out there and, and making people aware that they have options in regards to their location. Please, you got to take us out today, brother. I got to take you out. You gotta yeah, take us out no, way, no way, shape or form to take anybody. No, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, um, I just think, uh, yeah, the, I'm going to leave it with, with voting and how important it is for everyone to get out and vote. Uh, I know I said it in, in the last the last podcast, but um, your, your vote matters. Your, your, your voice matters. We matter. We matter. You matter as a, as a person. We all matter as, as society. And if we really want to affect change, then we need to go and get out and vote. Um, I think it's important. Uh, I think it's important for your for your communities. I think it's important for our future, for our, our children, for our grandchildren, for everyone to, to get out there and vote and make your voice heard. Because uh, this is, if, this, if there's a time where we can change things in, in society, the, ch the, the time is now. So please go out there and vote. And um, I hope that we, uh, on in November, we, uh, we have a good outcome. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in for the Crack Podcast. We love you guys and we'll see you next week. Peace.